<laughs> so not too long after buying the M1 iPad Pro, I proceeded to make a video listing all of the reasons why I ended up returning it. And I actually still stand by every one of those reasons. But I just bought another M1 iPad Pro. I'm gonna explain why I did for one very specific reason. Before we get into it, you guys know what to do. Hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss as we cover your favorite tech and video games. I'm Chris Grant Jr. I almost dropped this box. It's the Granny Geek Show. Okay, so I bought the brand new M1 iPad Pro with so much hope and glee in my heart as they announced the new mini LED display, the first Apple device outside of the XDR display. Yeah, iPad had the mini LED display before it was cool with these new MacBook Pros. Um, Thunderbolt, right? Better camera, all of the fixings. Uh, and of course the M1 chip, right? So this obviously seemed like a precursor to me to something bigger, something greater, right? So I made a video on that. That's the biggest video I've ever done on this channel. Um, and many of you guys who are subscribed have seen it. But I ended up being wrong. And come the day of WWDC 2021, where we saw where Apple was headed with iOS for the iPad specifically, we didn't get too much. In fact, it was so disappointing that that very day I went to the Apple store and returned this um, and, and I ended up getting a MacBook Air with M1 because it had all the power of M1 and basically everything this had outside of the XDR display. I gained some Thunderbolt ports and stuff like that. Most importantly, it had all of the professional software that I was accustomed to. Your Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, Logic Pro, all of those things that I wanted to see on the iPad. Um, so I'm not going to go over the entire list that I said and all the reasons why I returned it. I'll leave the link to that video in the description below. Um, but something has changed, okay, in my workflow. Something has changed in what I actually do on the day-to-day -day that has all of a sudden made this a great tablet for me and the only tablet, really, um, that I would want to use. Specifically, with the iPhone 13, um, I was recording... HDR videos and ProRes videos and things like that uh, and I really wanted to showcase that in videos I did videos on the iPhone 13 Pro I even um, can shoot HDR Adobe HDR on the 12 that I now have the 12 Pro Max um, I did a video on why I gave back the 13 Pro Max and I'm now with the iPhone 12 Pro hopefully I don't make a video like this regarding the iPhone 13 Pro now shooting in HDR I ran into some issues because my display I have a 32 inch um, LG 4K display. Uh, my iPad Pro from 2018 it was incredible when it came to editing the video, even the ProRes, all of that stuff, not a problem at all. Um, and so for those reasons, for video editing and all those things that I mentioned uh, in my previous video, um, the, the M1 iPad is not any really better than the 2020 and 2018 iPad Pros. Uh, but the one thing that it does have is the mini LED display. And so I ran into some issues while editing, um, understanding the brightness and contrast ratios uh, because I simply wasn't editing on an HDR display. So I thought about getting an HDR monitor and just moving from that. But I'm like, okay, but I can only use that when I'm docked, when I'm in desktop mode. If only there was an iPad that could do all these things while having uh, the mini LED display built in. And so, guys, that's ultimately why I ended up getting the M1 iPad. I got the exact same model that I had before, and I just feel I feel crappy about it. But, um, you know, it wasn't for the Thunderbolt. Um, it doesn't really do much for me. I don't use it that often. I'm not often accessing external hard drives or using external SSDs and stuff like that. I've got enough storage for basic YouTube video editing, and usually I just move them over once the video is completed. Um, but the mini LED allows me to edit. And so I want to do more uh, HDR video. I want to edit more in HDR. And there's only really one way to do that. Now, of course, you got the MacBook Pros, but um, those are still really hard to come by. I'm still trying to get my hands on one to review and like talk about and even compare to this M1 iPad Pro. And thumbs up and leave a comment down below if you'd like to see the M1 iPad Pro versus the MacBook Pro, the new M1 Pro uh, with the mini LED. Kind of compare those displays and see if there are blooming issues. By the way, um, one thing that I do not miss are the blooming issues on this. I understand that there was a knee-jerk reaction to it in the beginning, but I feel like a lot of content creators started to downplay play it to kind of uh, create that opposite force pushing back against people 
uh, saying that there was a real blooming issue so it didn't turn into a gate or something like that. Uh, but it is there. It is very noticeable. Um, I was watching uh, movies. I was watching uh, King Kong versus Godzilla and Justice League. Um, you know, just some some action movies to kind of uh, put this thing through its paces after not having used it since I got rid of it. If you're in the dark, it's 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 very very noticeable. I usually use it at full brightness in the dark, and you know, because I want the full maximum experience. I want a theater experience. Pitch black, headphones on, wired connection, full brightness. HDR and that's when you really do see the blooming uh, but I digress uh, the mini LEDs ability to create high dynamic range images and show them uh, is really why I ended up getting this so if that is not you then disregard this video because the video that I made on why I got rid of it uh, is still perfectly relevant and the 2018 or 2020 iPad Pro is still ridiculous in performance i actually didn't even get rid of that one i gave it to my mom and she's loved it so far um she's had no problems with performance i didn't have performance problems with video editing and stuff like that i would call myself a power user and you know my mom does like word processing i can't say that word processing and the like and so she hasn't had any issues with that either so i wanted to be upfront with you guys um i i had a different workflow at the time and that's why i didn't want the ipad pro uh m1 and now that my workflow has changed it's now something that i'd like to do but even then i would classify it as a want i want to go hdr a lot of people still don't care about hdr honestly i mean you know some people don't even notice it they have to understand it and i feel like any then you know i'm just going now i'm just going on but i feel like any kind of tech thing that you have to explain too much is probably not going to hit it uh, with mass markets. 4K saw a slow adoption versus 1080p because it was such a big difference versus a lot of people, depending on your viewing distance, can't tell the difference between 1080p and 4K. Um, and so I think that with HDR, understanding HDR and uh, brightness ratios and contrast and stuff like that, is something that people can see, but they don't actually know how to define it. That's why I ended up getting the M1 iPad Pro. Let me know what you think uh, down in the comments below. Give a like uh, if you liked the video, and of course, thumbs down if you didn't, but I hope that you did, and if you're watching at this point, I'm assuming that you liked it. Maybe you're just angry that, well, I've been a hypocrite. Um, <laughs> so let me know what you thought down in the comments below, and stay tuned, guys. I got more videos coming up soon. As we cover your favorite tech and video games. And yes, the video games are coming. I've been saying that for so long. We're going to get into some video games, baby. I got Luna from Amazon, okay? I've got some, uh, I got Apple Arcade, right? So I'm going to pick some games. Let me know down in the comments below uh, what games you'd like to see me play. Uh, if you'd like to do like walkthroughs and play alongs and stuff like that. We're going to do it, all right? So we cover your favorite tech and video games. I'm Chris Grant Jr. It's the Granite Geek Show.